Do you know that a British doctor in the 19th century wrote a series of books that turned the tide of India's economy? It led to the ruin of the traditional textile industry and with it, it brought down one of the most powerful economies of its time, India. This 160-year-old book, which is part of an 18-volume set and is on display as a part of a special exhibition at Mumbai's Asiatic Library, hides an ominous story. This was part of a systematic and cold-blooded British plan to list and study the textiles made by artisans across India, take it back to Britain and get factories there to remake them so that cheaper factory-made textiles could be sent back to be sold in India. This was the brainchild of John Forbes Watson, a doctor and employee at the London-based India House, later christened the Victoria and Albert Museum of London. The reason behind this book was clear, to not just stop the drain of wealth from Britain, but also reverse it. So what happened then was that the situation was such that Britain was paying us a lot of forex because they were buying cloths, spices, cotton, everything from us and India was not buying anything from them. So they perceived an imbalanced trade and this needed to be corrected for them. And what Watson was commissioned to do was to create what he called the portable industrial museums which documented Indian textiles in a way that the British manufacturers could actually replicate these designs on machines and they could sell it back in India. So to put it very simply, really, if, if, you're, you know, if we were a fly on the wall in the meeting board of the, uh, of the India Museum back then or the India office back then, the whiteboard would probably read, what is the problem? The problem is India is buying nothing from us and selling too much to us. How are we going to solve this problem? We are going to solve this by making things they don't know they need yet. In other words, mill-made fabric. How are we going to do it? Three steps. One, we document everything India has. Two, we will make all of that on the mills. Three, we will sell it back to India at a cheaper rate. Till as late as the 18th century, India contributed 24.4% of the global GDP wealth, while that of the entire Europe was just 23.3%. Such was the craze for Indian textiles in Europe that in the early 18th century, the British Parliament passed the Calico Acts banning the import of Indian fabrics. But this had little effect. And so, something had to be done. Dr. John Forbes Watson the author of the 18-volume catalogue, The Textile Manufacturers of India, meticulously documented over 700 Indian handmade textile samples so that they could be copied in Britain. It's interesting to read his opinions on textiles that he considered not good enough to be made on the mill or cannot be replicated. One category where he said Indian workmanship is so good you cannot ever make it on a machine, so it has to be made only by them by hand. So very clearly this man knew markets very well. He had lived in India long enough to understand its people. And I think uh, for me personally, the most interesting volume is the first volume, where all of this analysis is put out. So I think that's very interesting. Interestingly, despite all the effort, Watson was also candid in his confession that many fine textiles made by India's legendary artisans could simply not be replicated. That apart, the others were systematically studied, copied and recreated in mills across England to be sold back to India. Textile researcher and curator Savita Suri says the strategy was heartless. You know, while we use the word plunder, and I think in a fair sense it is, um, what um, troubles me deeply uh, is not so much that they took off our textiles and made it on mills. Uh, you know, there is a very clinical, brutal approach to this. Uh, and that affects in a sense because uh, Indian textiles 
are loaded with stories. Stories of the communities who make them and who wear them. They took away all our stories. And when they took away all our stories, they took away our identity with it as well. You know, they sort of made all of us the same in a very cold, um, heartless manner. From a net exporter of fine textiles over thousands of years, India soon became an importer. Thanks to the groundwork this series laid, India's textile industry was systematically destroyed, livelihoods were lost, and poverty and famine gripped the villages. By the end of their rule in India, the British had destroyed the Indian economy. In case of textiles, many traditions never recovered. It's amazing that even over 75 years after India's independence, we are trying to fix the damage done over that period. Mm -hmm.